Oh, hello, YouTube. So, I'm back. I was just on here a minute ago doing a review kind of deal. So, I figure, well, it's a gloomy day in San Francisco. It's cold. So I had my sweater on. It's cold here. We have a, a little cold spell. The thing about San Francisco is the weather, like, I'm complaining about it being so cold and freezing today. The next day, it'll be sunny and warm. <laughs> and the next day, it'll be something else. So, the weather's constantly changing here. Anyway, I thought I'd come in here and talk about writing writing is is a passion that i have uh so far it hasn't really paid me anything but it's just something i enjoy doing and, and I'm, what I'm trying to do i think at this point is get myself motivated to write uh i've written five books uh i'm gonna start this so i've written five books right i think that they're great books People who have if actually taken time to read them also think that there's good, there's some talent there. But the big problem with, with my writing is my books are self-published. So it's like a hard role because if you're going to be a self-published author, and it's so easy to do these days. I mean, I don't consider myself being kind of genius because I've written some books. Pretty much anybody can write a book these days and get it published, get it, uh, get it live in, in, in a few hours. But... Uh, Put a lot of time, a lot of time and effort in, in them, and when you're self-published author, I mean, it's, the sales are generally dismal. The average, the last information I read on it, the average uh, self-published author sells about a hundred dollars per book. So frustrating, but uh, I don't know. I, I guess I, I can't say that I'm a person who's got a lot of rejection slips, uh, and, you know, got discouraged. Because but frankly, I haven't sent out any books to to any publishers to to uh, to have that experience. I don't know if my mind works that way. That because I, I know nothing about writing. I, I just uh, I felt called to write one day. I got up and started writing, and uh, I've been doing it ever since about ten years. But uh, I never learned the ropes. I never took a chance and, and sent my work out to people and and, and took the risk of, of rejections and so forth. So, uh, the first book I just wrote, I was just doing like uh, uh, a, m a memoir type thing. It just, uh, I was retired. <laughs> Basically, I'll tell you, I was retired from being a drug dealer and convict. But I had a lot of time on my hands. And uh, I was trying to figure out something to keep my mind busy. And so I wrote my first book, which is, which is a story basically about my deliverance from uh, crystal meth. So it was about... Here I got it here. Here's a small book. It was my first book, and it, before I wrote it, I never had any intention of. Uh, I never even thought about writing really. But I still that, that that's one that, that I'll read over and over again because it is you know it contains my life in there, and the things that occurred and the things uh, that that I, that I came from. So it's an important book for me. But after I started writing it. I said, hey, I kind of like that. I kind of like telling the story. I wrote that all in uh, like a, a one single person narrative, first person narrative, where I just talked. There was no dialogue. There were no characters. I just told what happened, basically. And so um, uh, in my second effort, I said, I want to try to write a novel. Because I, I miss the, the, the uh, I miss sitting in my computer uh, every day. And I just, because, okay. Let me slow down. I got to do it a lot. I've always had dyslexia, which is kind of a condition about reading and writing. It kind of makes you, when you're young, they put you in slow classes and things like that. They were not diagnosed at that time, but now that I've read up on dyslexia and, and seen many uh, stories, but documentaries about dyslexia, I said, well, that's it. That's exactly that. That's me. So I kind of self diagnosed myself, but. I didn't think I, I could get myself together enough to, to write books, that's for sure. But I wanted to give it a try, so I started the, the, the first novel. I think that was, uh, I don't even know the years, let me see. Uh, I've done videos like this before, so I don't want to spend too much time with technical type stuff. Okay, so this is in two, 2011, the first novel. Thomas did the first book in 2009. Anyway, so that second book was a novel, but 
it strongly resembled my own experience still. I think a lot of writers do that. We kind of write what we know about. And so a lot of times that our, our first novels sound a lot like us, whether it's intentional or not. But what I discovered was, and that's a, see, I'm so prejudiced because I guess, I, for me, it's a very, very good book. I, but I don't really know because I didn't get a lot of reviews in that book. They didn't know how to promote it or anything like that. So people who know you, your friends, they're going to tell you, you know, they loved it. It was wonderful and all the kind of things. But uh, so far, it hasn't really been tried in, the mar in an open market. I don't think it's, it's out there. But uh, so anyway, what I was saying was uh, the book resembles real life for first couple chapters anyway. As I start building these characters, though, they start taking on their own lives, having their own experiences and so forth. So it starts out sort of like my own story, even though that was not necessarily intentional. But a lot of the characters, you know, the mother's grandmother, maybe four characters, very, very strongly resemble, including myself, resemble real life people. And then the person kind of got their own life. Well, after I got that book together, it's also a love story and it talks about the, the experience of being a Christian and being gay and all the, all the parts of being gay. So I took my time with that. You know, it was over 400, 450 pages. I learned a lot in that experience about things that, that I didn't even realize that I knew. But um, when I finished it, it, it was just intended to be a, no a novel. I figured out if I do write anything more, I'll go on to something else. But when I got through with it, I wanted to pick it up there. I said, okay. So I wrote a second book, and it turned out to be a sequel to the first one. Now, this book, the second book, is called uh, The Second Novel third book, the second novel, The Epiphany, um, is cons it may be my very best work because it's the one that got the most reaction. Now, if you go to Amazon, you'll see that I got uh, a couple of full page uh, uh, reviews on that book. People who have taken time to really lay it completely out and uh, I got a lot of response from, from individuals who read that book. And uh, it wound up being probably my best work, more, most concise. Anyway, it was called The Epiphany. And it picks up in the first book, the guy, uh, the love story. One of the guys dies in the story. Uh, there are several people who die in, that, in the first story. Tragic death. And that killed off the main character which I may or may not have been a mistake. So, but I picked up the Epiphany. I picked up, when I read off the Epiphany, I picked up that new character, the one that was left. He wasn't a primary character. The primary character was murdered. And the, and the guy who was left, his lover, who was a gospel singer, was left. So I picked it up there after his partner had already died. And so forth. He just carried on and created a, a life for him. But uh, I wanted to write about San Francisco. I wanted to set it in San Francisco. And so that was the, the, the big thing. So it kind of resembled real life in a different kind of way. But by this time, these characters have their own their own lives. They don't have anything to do with me. But uh, yeah, so that's the epiphany. The epiphany is spelled that way intentionally. People would say, well, it's got to be in with the Y. And then if it's more than one, it's got to be in with the uh, IE. But no, Epiphany, they, are, they were beings. They were like, uh, like if you have an epiphany, and if you gave that epiphany, you know, you have a certain thought, a certain realization, put flesh on it, it becomes like an angel type character who is actually an epiphany, but he is a real thing. So they're a race of people, the Epiphany. Anyway, that was a great book, and, and, I, and I will read that one over and over again. When I uh, I created created a new love story with that book and so forth, so I figured, well, this is the one that's going to make it. This is the, this one is going to put me uh, in the writing world for real, seriously. But once again, uh, I kind of I don't know if it's laziness or fear, but I self published the book, and this time I found out how to really self publish. But the other books it took me a couple thousand dollars to put them together. 
Uh, this one it was really was self-published, and I and, and I figure out, uh, out how to do it on Amazon and so forth. So it, it's kind of a, a freeing kind of thing. Where I said, well, whatever I write, it, it is going to at least make it into print. I can guarantee that. I don't know who necessarily going to re read them, but uh, you know, I love this story. I uh, one of the guys who reviewed it was this African American um, professor taught Af Africana Studies at uh, San Francisco State. Well, I had just met the man, actually, and I gave him a free copy, a promotional copy, and he really, really, really got into the story. He got so excited about it. So he wrote me a full-page uh, review, over a full-page review on that book. And I said, okay, well, only if it's getting the, per the hand of the right person. <laughs> I had a lot to learn. But the second guy was <clears throat> someone who contacted me on Facebook. I guess he, he just re reviewed regularly. He's a professional reviewer. Found my book on Amazon, and he got he's, he's a white guy. So excited about that that, that story. I, I would love to sit here and and read you the review because I'm so proud of it. And it's uh, it's long. It's it's, it's 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 over a full page also. But it was so honest, and this was a person that I had never met, knew nothing about me. He put me on on on, on the blog site. Uh, what's it called? Some blog site with uh, they, they review uh, gay gay romance. Anyway, he got so excited. He said that my third book. This was called um, Muse. This one. This one was already out. Nice cover. It's a big old book. Uh, anyway, he said that. He didn't. He couldn't review that book because there were some some mistakes in it. There's a reason why there was a, a, a well. Actually, it's one mistake that repeated re, over and over again. Some some advice I'd taken from a a writer's group on Facebook, and I went and changed and made this punctuation error. And then I copied it all the way through the book, and it took me a long, long time to get all of those commas in there. So uh, he was the, of the opinion. That those comments should not be there. It was a repeat mistake all the way through the book. So he said, "Listen, I'm, I like the, uh, the your other book, Piffy. So, so well, I'm going to do that book for you. I'm going to do it for free." And so I, I was very excited. First, I was excited that someone has actually heard my writing. Someone took time to get into one of my books, and a stranger, and. Um, because they even made me uh, writer of the month on that website. I wish I could remember the name of it. You know, they, they have tons of uh, gay romance novels on there that are reviewed by several different writers, several reviewers. I just can't. I'm having a blank on, on what the name of it is. Anyway, so I said, "Oh, hi, that's exciting!" I, I, of course, I rushed him the uh, the manuscript, and uh, he was gonna he was gonna uh, correct. This book for me, edited for me, and then uh, maybe a couple weeks later, I didn't hear from him, and so I contacted him eventually. He said, it was, it was, "Is there any movement on the book? Are you, are you working on it or whatever?" And the man said he had, had a, a heart attack. I said, "Oh my God!" You know, I met this guy online. It's always someone who just contacted me out of nowhere uh, on Facebook and told me that he had read my book and he wanted to review it, and also recommend me for this this. Uh, Book of the month kind of thing, and so I don't know if, if it was just a some a flake or the guy changed his mind or I didn't know what to think because I didn't know the person, and uh, so he didn't work on the book. He they didn't contact me. He said, "Well, I've, I've just been sick. I think it was the flu." Maybe a month later, there was a post on Facebook. The man died, so he had a heart attack, and then he had a second heart attack. And he passed away. So sad. So th that never happened. So anyway, I kept writing. As I said, I was in the process of another book there. Muse. Muse was a story, uh, a writer's story. It was about a guy and his muse. So this is a person that's in his mind <coughs> that he meets in San Francisco. And in Muse, I, I don't know if that's a good book or not. Like I said, didn't get a lot of readership. So, but it's a story about uh, a guy meeting 
meeting his muse. And it turns out he's, he's a psychiat psych psychotic psychiatric experience. This relationship he has with his muse. And then it, it, the book progresses. As the book progresses, you realize that not only is this muse not real, although he imagines it as being a real person, uh, that not only did he have the, the, this muse, this, this uh, situation going, his relationship going with this with this muse person, he also had a, uh, an enemy that lived in his mind. So there was a degree of schizophrenia or split personality disorder. But he was actually, well, let me see if I can get this right, this is hard. <laughs> okay, this is a story about an intersex person. So, what he, just, he has no knowledge of this, but what he discovers is he was actually born intersex. And he had both sex organs. The doctors did operations on him when he was a little child and made him a girl. It was easy, the surgery was easier to just make him a girl. And so he had the surgery to remove his penis and, and things when he was, I think it was, was he six? The surgery, the actual surgery had to happen when he was six, but they start uh, treating him as a girl. So no, at six, he realized he was actually a boy. So the surgery was done almost immediately. So maybe two years old, he had a surgery, they turned him into a girl. So he was raised as a little girl up until six years old. At six years old, his parents started realizing that his personality and his mannerisms and everything about him was boy. He was a boy. His identity was a boy. So they changed, they had, he had additional surgeries to turn him into a boy. And they moved, changed the house, all the environment and everything. And he buried it. So he had no, no memory of ever being a boy or a girl or anything else. Very little memory of his childhood at all. And he had just been a boy since he was six years old. And uh, so it's a psychological drama. Uh, uh, this uh, the, apparently the, uh, the 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 girl personality comes back at some point, C comes to him, and when his muse is involved in his mind, the the uh, the woman, the girl personality, wants to kill him. So very complicated, but it's, it's an intense uh, psychological drama. It also involves the murder of the psychiatrist who discovers all this. Okay, so <clears throat> then, of course, my current book, current book available at Amazon.com, Amazon.com, Timothy Blaine, is called The Label. So in the first novel, this is almost, the backdrop is all gospel music, right? But in the first book, the, 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 the gospel singer, who is married to my main character, him and his partner start a record label. Okay. So this record label is in all of these books. It's like the backdrop. They're mostly uh, gay men who sing gospel music. They all work at this label. There's a label there and there's a church. So the label is about the the uh, record company started. It's complicated about how the story, the first book tells about how the, the record label came, came to being and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so now the, there is a group that lives in Atlanta, Georgia group of young people they get discovered by this label the label brings them to Los Angeles and the label is haunted I'll say this all of my books have uh, supernatural elements it's not always the primary thing but it, they're always supernatural elements the first one uh, the person who actually goes up into heaven comes back is spiritual in that way uh, but it's primarily in, in real time the first book and in the second book, Epiphany, of course, those are like angels, so they're supernatural beings. And then in, in this uh, muse, muse is not doesn't have a supernatural element, but it, it has a, it's a psychological drama. But still, has the same record company, and there's a church that was made, also created in the first book. The church and the record company are th consistent, but uh, muse is totally a psychological drama, murder drama, murder mystery. Okay, so then the new book label, it is, did I start to talk about all these damn books? 
I think I was starting, I was talking about the writing process and trying to get motivated for the new one. Anyway, I'm already here. So, then in the label, <coughs> the label's laid it, uh, uh, haunted by characters who, who, uh, who started a theater, which later became the record label. So the theater first became a record label. This book goes into the lives of the people who built the theater. So the, this is before, it precedes any of these books. Uh, it's complicated, I know. So the label, they, they won't let these kids record in, in the studio. And uh, <clears throat> they can't figure out what, why it can't get in the building. Things break, things, spooky shit happens. And uh, so they call in this medium. And the medium discovers that the record label is not rejecting the kids who are in this group, who are newly signed to the label. There is, is the, the, the building is responding to one of the mother, kids' mothers, who is actually, her name is Dorothy Moody, and she is a witch. She has an agenda. So the story is about the battle between the witch, who is this, one of the kids' mother, and the building contains these ghosts so it's a great story too but they are great to me so i mean so i like writing i mean the writing process is wonderful but when people don't if, if you have no success and people aren't reading i mean in other words put it like this if i had written one of those books and, and it, it, it ended up paying me thirty thousand dollars or something like that i would have strong motivation to get up and write the next book that's kind of the crest of what i'm talking about so now i want to write again i want to get another story i have another story as I said, there's a church in, in, in these books, and now I want, I'm want i writing a book called One Love, which the church is called One, One Love Body of Believers Church. Now, these books are not religious, in no way religious. They're about people who go to church and sing. Okay, so this new book I want to do on uh, is on the label, but it's hard. I'm finding it very, very hard to get motivated. These other things, I finished one, and then... A couple of days later, or a week later, I started a new book. It was just that simple. I don't know why I'm so stuck right now, but every time I sit down in the morning, you know, to, to, to do to write it right again, I'm blocked. So I guess I'm going to talk my way out of my writer's block. But um, so I'm in, I'm in like chapter two of this new book. The pastor there, who was he's been in, a part of the story since the very beginning. He's a straight man. He's he was in, involved with the original protagonist. He was his brother. Anyway, so he's been in the stories, all the stories. And his church has been in all the stories. Sometimes a lot, sometimes a little. But now it's the church's turn for me to write about. And um, so he, the, oh, but the, so far what I have is the guy has a heart attack. He's got to find a uh, successor. That's the premise. He's got four kids. Not particularly interested in ministry. <clears throat> the one kid who did show some interest in ministry is a heroin addict, unbeknownst to the family. And so uh, I'm in I'm in chapter two, and I've already got a death. We don't we don't want to call it a murder yet, but um, it's just starting. <laughs> so hopefully, at some point, you're when you're when you're writing. I don't care if you, how, whatever kind of writer you, you are, you get to a point where now you have the story in your head. You can sit down every day and, and add to the story. And I could do that. I can just fucking concentrate. Or maybe I'm online too much or something. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, anyway, you love the process. I think that uh, <clears throat> just having some sort of success or knowing that people are going to read the book, that's the frustration because many times it's like, why am I bothering with this? You know, if all I'm going to ever sell is 100, 100 copies of these books, why bother? You know, that's the devil. That's the discouraging part because the actual, the process, the process of creating should be the, the, the primary motivation. And so I've got to get to that place. So anyway, this is just a little video about writing, about discouragement, uh, about uh, trying to talk myself into 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 this new book so
you'll know. If it come out with it, you say, oh, he did it. <laughs> he got through. And I will at some point if I do break through my, my little block period here. Because I started this right after the other book released. This, uh, this other one, it just came out maybe six months ago. And so I tried to start immediately, you know, like keep on writing it where you don't got to, you know, get started again kind of thing. But it hasn't worked out that way. But, um, I, have, uh, I have faith that at some point I will get to the point where, I, where I'm writing every day, day again. But it's, it's a process. Uh, it'll be a lot. I'll be much more easily motivated if you would take the time now to go to Amazon.com and put up t Timothy Blaine and then order the book. <laughs> order the books. <laughs> when you guys read them, tell me you read them. That, that'll that'll motivate me. So anyway, uh, the download of the all my novels is about two ninety nine. So it's reasonable. Uh, I think they're great reads. But I could be wrong. Could be just me. I, I do have a strong prejudice. <laughs> All right, people. I'm just rambling. Later.